All right, welcome to today's lesson where we're going to be taking a little bit of a closer look at the different data types that exist in the Java programming language. So as we know, not everything in Java is an object. There are in fact eight different primitive data types, and you can see the list of them there. There's byte, short, int, long, float, double, char, and boolean. Now primitive data types are basically used um, so that they can speed up the execution of programs and take up less memory in the computer. But since they're not objects, primitive data types have no methods. That means you can't do like int dot something or other. Right? You can, there's no method to do something special with integer values or chars or booleans and so on. And they also, because they're not objects, cannot be extended. Now, we can still get around this by using what we call wrapper classes. Uh, each primitive data type has an associated wrapper class which can provide methods for dealing with data of that particular type. So you can see here, for each of the types that we have, there's an associated wrapper class. So I can use the double wrapper to store a, a primitive data type of a double and then get access to methods that would help me work with double data. So for example, converting data to another type, there are methods to do that in the double class. So for integer data types, there are four different data types to store integer numbers. Each one has a different range of values that it can hold. So you can see, for example, here a byte, the lowest possible value you can have is uh, negative 128, and the largest one is 128. And the bigger the range that we have here, the more memory it takes up to store it. So generally speaking, you want to try and keep your data stored in as small of a data type as, as possible. However, the most common type would be integer. So a lot of the methods that exist in most classes will refer to data stored as an integer type because this is the most common. The other thing you can notice here is that data stored in each of these various types is exact. So uh, if I say 3, I mean exactly 3. And this is slightly different from the float types. There are two float types that exist. and they also have a different range of values that we can store. So float stores much smaller than double. Okay, um, And the other thing interesting about this is that their precision is different. So because I can have the number 1 divided by 3, 1 divided by 3 is 3 0.3333333 repeating. And that would repeat on forever. So I cannot get the exact value of what 1 divided by 3 is. What you can see instead is that they have different amounts of pre precision. So a float is precise or exact to seven significant digits, and a double is precise to 16 significant digits. And this has effects on dealing with numbers that are stored in these data types. So because they're not precise, we can have problems when precision is required. So for example, if I take a look at these two float values, I can only be uh, exact to eight significant digits. So this number is in fact identical according to Java to this number here even though they're actually different. The other problem that can occur here is an example I can show you in a program. So I have this type here where I've got a double of 0, 0.0. And I'm going to run a loop that I want to stop when I get to 10.0 uh, and I'm going to go up by 0.1. So you'd think you'd run this 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, so on until you get up to 10.0. But if I actually run this code, you'll see that it goes up way past that value. In fact, this is going to be an infinite loop. Okay. So if I look at here, when I get to the numbers, I'm not actually adding the values I'm looking for. And I go to 9.999998, and it skips 10.0. There is no 10.0 that is exactly calculated from this. So you can see because these are not precise, the way they're being stored in, in memory is causing me to lose some, some of that precision in them. So you've got to be careful with that when you're working with numbers that are float values or have a decimal value. Okay. So the next question we need to follow is, how do we convert between the different uh, types of data? So we can automatically convert data from the integer types, so long, byte, char, uh, long, byte, short, and int, to a float type. Okay, so if I have an integer value here, I want to store it as a double, it just does it. It, points, it puts a point zero behind it. So that's easy enough. Okay, Going from float to int is a little bit difficult. We have to cast that. When you cast something, you put the type that you're trying to convert it to in brackets in front of the value you're trying to, to change. And when you do this, you lose precision. You lose the, um, the decimal places here. It doesn't round it. It just gets rid of or ignores everything that's after the decimal point. So 3.999 would get cast as a 3, not as a 4. If you want the rounded value of a float type, you have to actually use 
data that's stored in the uh, math class. So math.round, if you provide it with a double, it will return the closest or the rounded long value. And if you give it a float, it will give you an int value. Okay. The other thing you have to be aware of is if you try to cast to a type that stores a smaller number, you're going to lose you may also lose precision there as well. So if I want to cast from um, an int to a short, obviously if I have a larger int, it's going to max it out at the largest short I could possibly have. So the Boolean data type, as you remember, stores true or false data. And we can convert this to the other types as well. You can convert it to an integer. Remember, integer would be 1 versus 0, 1 being true, 0 being false. You do that using this code here. So I've got a Boolean value. I've given it a value of either true or false. To convert it, I'm going to say B, and I'm going to check that. This is going to be either give me a true or false answer. If the answer is true, it gets a 1 and returns that. If this is false, it gets the 0, the, the value on the other side of this colon, and returns that. If you want to convert from an integer, you can use this code. So again, I have an integer. I want to store it as a Boolean. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the not value of what that is. So if I was a 1, 1 does not equal 0, so that would be true. So this would be stored as true. If i is a 0, um, 0 does not equal 0. That's false. 0 does equal 0. So because this returns as false, it's going to store the false inside Boolean. We also have the char type, which is a character. It stores a single Unicode character. Um, so when you do this, you need to make sure you're using single quotes. Chars are always stored in single quotes, whereas double quotes represent strings. And you can also represent special characters by using the backslash, the escape sequence. So you can do backslash n for a new line, or backslash t for a tab, or backslash u, and then provide the four-digit Unicode value, which will give you that particular character as well. So if we want to convert between an integer and a char, you can do this by casting. So you can cast it directly. So the int value cast it to the char, it gets you the char, the, uh, the char for that. But if you want to go to an integer, it's a little bit more difficult. You have to use one of the methods from that character wrapper class. The method specifically would be the get numeric value. You provide the character you're trying to get the numeric value of, it will return the Unicode value of that particular character. Now, the last thing we might want to convert to is strings here. Um, remember, strings are not primitive data types. They are objects, so they do have methods that we can use to manipulate them. This makes it very easy to get the uh, this, the string value of a, of a particular variable type. So I can use the string dot value of and then provide a piece of information. So some sort of integer, some sort of double, some sort of char, whatever, and it will return the string value of whatever that is. Um, chars also have additional methods. So in addition to using the to string method or the value of method, I can also use to string and I can also say string s equals and put double quotes in here and add an individual character. That will convert it automatically to a string and concatenate it onto the end of my empty string here, resulting in just my one character value of a string. Um, if I want to go from a string to a numerical data type, I can use, again, code found in the wrapper class. They all have some sort of parse method. So it would be parse int would give me the integer value of a string, parse double would give me the double value, parse float, and so on. So all of the numerical data types have this parse method um, that allows me to convert from a string to the type of variable I'm, I'm looking for. And then finally, um, if I want to convert a string to a char, I can use the char at. So if I have the string I'm looking for, char at provide the position of the character that I'm trying to get. Um, and this could be any position within the string. It will return that as a character. That's it. That's all for today. We'll see you in class tomorrow where we can practice what we've learned.